There's a couple of guys that went up first, but now we're hearing some yelling and it looks like they caught something. This is incredible. Let's go. Holy smoke, guys. Where do you see this? Oh my God. This is raw. This is real. This is travel. Welcome to hunting with the Hatsa. We're about to take you on one of the wildest experiences of our lives. We have been with five different tribes from all over the world, but this one had a profound effect on us. Some of the scenes in this video might be hard to watch. So before we begin, please, please, please keep an open mind. This is truly how they live, and although it might be different than anything we're used to, we should not only respect it, but appreciate its raw beauty. We woke up at 3.30 in the morning so we can join the Hatsapa tribe on their first hunt of the day. It is 7.30 a.m. We're about to get after it. We are in northern Tanzania near Lake Eyazi, home to the Hadzabe, one of the last remaining true hunter-gatherer tribes in the world. They speak Hadzane, a complex language that uses clicks. <coughs> we will be joining the tribe for a two-day hunt, including a night hunt that tested my nerves. Truly a remarkable experience. We're going on this adventure with our friends from Serengeti Clarity. Without them, this adventure would not be possible. Now these people are the last hunter-gatherer tribe here in Tanzania, and they're quite unique. Unfortunately, there are only about 1,500 Hatsabe left, and only about a third continue to live strictly off the land. You'll see later in the video why their numbers keep diminishing. Hey. 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 To greet a man, you have to say Mtana Bawa, and to greet a woman, you have to say Mtana Aya. And the Hatsabe called us Koko, which means friend. You can see right behind me <laughs> that there is a baboon skull right over here. And the Hatsabe are actually known to hunt and eat baboon. It's actually one of their favorites. Baboon! Wow! That's a baboon! <laughs> nice! My man's wearing a baboon, but he killed! He eats the meat? puts the skin as a jacket. No animal is left wasted here. We got here right on time. The hunters are preparing their arrows and straightening them with their teeth. Before we head out, our friend decides to show us the different arrows they use during their hunts. Each arrow is designed for a specific animal, anywhere from small birds to monkeys to even large kudu. As you'll see in a second, the Hatsabe are really good at describing their hunting. You can understand what they're saying by just watching them. The arrow with the corn cob at the tip is for birds. This is so that the arrow just knocks them out and it doesn't pierce the meat. The following arrow is for small antelope and mongoose. This one's specialized for monkeys and baboons. It's barbs so that the animal doesn't take it out and escape. Finally, they have a poison arrow made out of the root of the desert rose plant. This arrow is meant for really big animals such as kudu. And as Mmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmmm
The name of the skilled hunter who got this bird is Itakunja. He tucked the bird into his belt so that the hunt can continue. This is one of the reasons why the Hatsabe are diminishing in numbers, and that is because other tribes like the Datoga are encroaching in their hunting grounds. Look at this. This is a prime example as to why. So I wasn't expecting this, but we're gonna go ahead and cook the bird that we just caught, and then we'll continue with the hunt. At least that's what I thought we were doing. Instead, we were shown how the Hatsa celebrate getting lunch. They smoke whatever's available, and let me tell you, they smoke a lot in their culture. These guys made a fire in about two minutes. If you ever try to friction fire, you know it's very, very difficult. The Hatsa believe smoking enhances their senses, and it gives them energy to keep hunting. Can't really argue their point, they're amazing at what they do, and it also makes them really funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny that we don't speak the same language, but I can tell by his expressions and his little mannerisms that he's he's a jokester. Whatever they smoked, it definitely increased their senses because the Hatsa were about to give us a show in skill and accuracy. Over the next hour, the hunters were able to bring down several birds right in front of our eyes. Awesome job! And can we just stop and recognize how skilled these guys are? Being able to witness them hitting small birds from a distance was absolutely amazing. And now we're finally ready for breakfast. But first, we need to wash our hands, right? Let us show you how they do it. Okay. Oh my gosh! That I can just wash myself. He just gave me nature's soap. This is incredible. So they just told me that we are gonna make a little fire and we're gonna cook all the birds that we just caught. Let me ask you something. Would you eat them? So they just gave me a baboon skin crown, called me the queen today. <laughs> Unfortunately, we did not get anything big enough for the whole tribe. Tells us that they want to catch a baboon tonight and he invites us. We just sat down and we are starting a fire and they are going to be cooking all the birds that they caught this morning. This is how he's cleaning the bird. Feathers are flying everywhere. As always, our friend Okunja was in charge of the fire and he made it look so easy. They just threw that little bird that we caught straight into the fire. It is such a privilege to be able to share this moment with all of the hunters here. Quiet moment, they're just about to have breakfast and enjoy each other's company. They're so generous. Obviously they offered me a piece. I couldn't say no. It tastes like chicken. On our way back to camp, the Hatsa stopped to hydrate. What we witnessed was nothing short of amazing. Looks like we stumbled on some drinkable water here. We can't drink from this water, and most of the humans in the world couldn't drink from this water. We were stunned. We couldn't believe how they could manage drinking stagnant water. It goes to show how well adapted they are to this way of life. Back at camp, the tribe performed a dance to celebrate our visit and to wish us luck in the upcoming hunts. <laughs> So another thing that the Hadza eat are actually monkey, and they have one here kind of drying. <laughs> Before we left, Kunja really wanted to show off his bed. He went to great lengths to get this mattress made out of kudu skin. Yeah, that's how he sleeps. <laughs> and then he smokes from the fire here. Pretty awesome. Thank you. Welcome to Hunting with the Hatsa, night edition. Let's go. I was told the guys haven't had much to eat since we left them earlier. We really needed to catch something, not only for them, but for the tribe. Without these headlamps, it is literally pitch black.
Most of the tribe was sleeping when we arrived, and then something happened I was not expecting. The first thing they said to me was, I could not use my headlamp. I'll explain why in a bit. But imagine being in complete darkness, not knowing what you're stepping on, and knowing this is Black Mamba territory did not make it any easier for me. My guides asked me one last time if I really wanted to go. I told them I had to try. Yeah, this is pretty scary, simply because we're not allowed to like put the lights on. So this is gonna get really interesting. 20 minutes into the darkness and we started to hear baboons in the distance. The leader approached us to be very, very quiet. And then we just heard him running away. I must admit, I blame myself. Maybe I was just being too loud. Our hunt wasn't over though. Having lost the element of surprise, the Hatsa switched their attention to the trees, looking for sleeping birds. This also meant I could switch my light on. You can light your own. You say you can light one. You, you can light, light one? Yeah. You sure? Yeah, sure. No problem. Yeah. You got something. Yes. <laughs> yes, Manako. Manako. <laughs> I have no idea how these guys do it. Navigating through this like Bush. and somehow finding prey and catching it on the spot. Pretty amazing. The Hatsa showed me that night that in order to survive, you must keep pushing forward. They never show signs of frustration, they just focus on their new target. That's how they survive in the toughest of environments. Gathering next to the fire with them, sharing a meal, telling stories, and laughing. I could only think that this is what we were doing thousands of years ago. We just sat next to the fire and enjoyed our time together. They told me to get some rest because tomorrow's hunt would be a tough one. One thing was clear, tomorrow we could not come back empty handed. Welcome to day two. We're spending some time with the Hatsa. We brought a gift for the tribe. Um, people like to smoke here, so we bought them a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> You're doing it backwards. We gave the pack of cigarettes to the elders. I guess they've never had pre-made cigarettes, so there was a bit of confusion. They were very thankful after they figured it out. The Hatsa have pretty much avoided <coughs> the modern society, but they will make an exception for cigarettes. We were told we'd be paired up with a different set of hunters, a father and his sons. This would be our last attempt at getting something large enough to bring for everyone. So guys, this morning we actually have two children that are coming with us and they don't go to school. They actually, this is their school, learning to hunt with the elders. And he has a little bow and arrow. We're learning today. Within five minutes, we had a catch. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> First catch of the day. Wow. It's going to be breakfast. To be honest, I started to lose hope and I thought we wouldn't be able to provide anything for the tribe. Another failed attempt. And just as I was thinking that, chaos. Oh, we, we're hearing some yelling out in the distance and it looks like they caught something. Holy smokes. Oh my god. Oh my god, we we hit something big, guys. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. Oh my god, we missed it. And we were behind the pack. Whatever he's saying, yeah. Well earned. Cannot believe we just caught this. Wow, the Hatsa are truly amazing people. So guys, like I was saying before, children here don't go to school, but what is happening behind me right now, cleaning and skinning the animal, that's their form of schooling here, because that's how they're gonna learn how to survive. So you can see this little boy, he's probably four years old. He's helping this older boy clean and skin this animal. And that's pretty much today's lesson. <sighs> Please try to keep an open mind here. I know some of these images might be a little bit graphic, but in reality, this is really where we came from. This is how we used to live. The Hatsa didn't wait around. They've been hungry and now it's time to feast. I was wondering what was going through the father's head. It looked like he was very, very proud of his son and now him and his three boys would be feasting 
thanks to the skills he passed on to them. It's literally like we were transported 10 to 12,000 years in the past. This is absolutely incredible. They just offered us some quill springer that they just killed here in the bush. We could not say no to this. No. Thank you so much, Hatsa. Thank you. And the Hatsa are incredible people. They're resilient, they're skilled, and they can survive in the wild, which is incredible that people like this still exist. We did it. It was time to head back to the tribe and share the rest of this clip springer. We had achieved our goal and we could not be prouder. So guys, so if you're interested in coming and meeting the Hadza, I'm gonna put the link in the description below for Serengeti Clarity. And please, please have this experience. It's quite humbling and quite life-changing. And with that, we're gonna conclude the video. Catch you guys on the next adventure. Peace. As always, thank you so much for watching.